Most chickadee parents end their season here, but not Inky. After fledging four healthy chicks, she went straight into preparing for a second brood. Something chickadees only usually attempt in years when insects are especially abundant, which typically happens every few years. Yet Inky has had two broods every single year she's nested in my birdhouse, all three seasons. Across the forest, another pair, Ada and Sull, were getting close to welcoming their first brood into a roofless snag, where every passing shadow could mean danger. Their story is for another day, but watching them made me wonder. Could the safety and readiness of a nest box be the reason Inky dares to go for a second brood year after year? Whatever the case, I was thrilled, and a little curious about Inky trying again. How many eggs would she lay this time? And what about those two eggs from the first brood that didn't hatch? Were they still tucked beneath the fur? If so, would she try incubating them? Or leave them be? With the nest already built, she could get straight to it. But that doesn't mean some freshening up wasn't in order. For the next few days, she brought in fur and plant fibers, her bills stuffed each time she arrived. Three days later, I finally caught sight of eggs, two of them. Unlikely as it was, I couldn't help but wonder if they might be the two that hadn't hatched during her first brood. By the end of June, there were four eggs in the cup. And that's where she stopped. When Inky began incubating, Ada and Sol, the chickadees across the forest, were just welcoming their own hatchlings into that roofless snag. The contrast between Inky's well-sheltered home and theirs couldn't have been starker. One morning, something landed on the box. A recurring trend this season. Nothing ever came of it, and I still don't know who the visitor was. If something like this happened to Ada while in her nest, it certainly would have been devastating. Inky sure is lucky to be so well protected. Philbert, understandably, didn't bring food as often as he had before, but he always made time for his mate. Taking care of fledglings and feeding a brooding female is no small task, and it speaks volumes about the kind of provider he is. These birds deserve medals for their tireless work. It had been about nine or ten days since Inky began incubation, so hatching was getting close. As I always do, I set up my blank camera to record overnight. Nothing happened, but when the 11th of July rolled around, Filbert's behavior changed. He would drop in without food just to check. Or arrive with food and make calls even though Inky wasn't there. How do they know it's time? In those final hours before hatching, the chicks begin making tiny muffled chirps from inside their shells, a signal to their parents that they are on the way. Even more remarkable, those same peeps are also a message to their siblings, helping them hatch in sync. By noon, I saw one egg with small cracks. Inky was paying close attention. By 1.40 p.m., a nestling was in the cup. I switched to my GoPro hoping for better footage of the next hatch. But Inky kept them hidden under her. I didn't get to catch it. The following day, another chick joined, but again, no clear view. A viewer once told me that nestlings don't usually eat right after hatching. It's not because they are too tired, though hatching is exhausting, 
they get their first nutrients from the yolk they absorbed before leaving the egg. And if you've ever wondered how they breathe while in the egg, the answer is through tiny pores in the shell and a special membrane rich in blood vessels that lets oxygen in and carbon dioxide out. Nature is truly amazing. By the next morning, I expected to see the fourth nestling, but it wasn't until 12.30 p.m. that I caught it. And Inky wasn't there. The blink camera recorded the tiny chick wiggling free of the shell. I wish I'd thought to set up the GoPro, but this was still pretty neat. Inky returned, ate half of the shell, and removed the rest. Four pink, healthy nestlings. Filbert worked tirelessly feeding them. And Inky, too. At one point, Inky didn't want to leave her brooding job just so Filbert could feed them. She must have been so comfy. For the next week, it was a steady routine. Food in, diapers out. Remarkably, Filbert was still feeding chicks from the first brood, too. Inky picked up more feeding duties when Filbert was busy. They worked together like a well-oiled machine. Beside feeding, Inky also had to keep the nest clean, preen the chicks, and tend to herself. One of my favorite things about Inky is how often she looks out from the nest hole. Like she's taking in the view. I just find it so cute. After weeks of hot, dry weather, the rain came pouring down. Inky and her brood stayed snug and dry. But I wondered about Ada and Sol's vulnerable little family, who must have faced a much harder time. Once the rain cleared, feeding picked up even more. I could always tell when it was inky. Smaller, lighter, and one short tail feather, while Filbert was bigger, darker, and with several short tail feathers from molting. Another giveaway, after feeding, Inky would dive into the cup to clean, a job only female chickadees do. By the 21st, their voices had gained strength and their feathers were coming in. I noticed a shift once the chicks were 11 days old. Inky was spending less time in the nest. She'd feed and clean, but didn't stick around. There were long stretches of time with them being alone. Their eyes were fully open now, and they were beginning to look like proper chickadees. At night, I checked to see if she was still roosting with them, and there she was, settled over them to keep them warm. Pretty soon, she'll stop spending the night with them. The next day, Inky was absent for much longer stretches. Filbert done most of the feeding. When I went looking for Inky, I found her in the woods, looking rough and tending to her feathers. 
By mid-season, most chickadee parents start to look worn out, and the molt doesn't help. It can be exhausting and irritating. I have seen her do this in her first year during her second brood, leaving feeding mostly to Filbert. I get the impression it has a lot to do with the demands of molting. She was looking rougher than Filbert. Meanwhile, the nestlings were busy preening and trying out their wings. If one of them moved a certain way, the others reacted as if a parent had arrived. They picked at each other, flapped, and grew bolder. This brood was noticeably more adventurous than the first, starting to venture out into the box days before fledging. One peeked out the entrance hole. Another gave Filbert a fecal sack just outside the cup. These little ones sure have it made with such a big open space. Quite different from what Ada's little ones have. Although Inky's involvement has decreased, she still stops by from time to time to help out. She hasn't forgotten about them or given up. At 18 days old, they looked perfect. Healthy, plump, vibrant, with soft, flawless feathers. Each day, the playing, wing flapping, and hole peeking picked up, telling me fledging was near. I love how curious this brood is, picking at everything almost all the time. And their little chirps to one another, so endearing. Chickadees truly are such lovely birds. I don't know what it is, but chickadee nestlings can't resist pecking on the wall. It made me wonder what woodpecker nestlings would be like. Inky hadn't stayed the night in a couple of days. Typical for the late nesting stage when mothers roost elsewhere. 19 days since hatching now. One chick flew up to the camera and stayed there, pecking for ages. Filbert took notice when he came in, but after a moment, he ignored it. I like to imagine the chick was just doing some maintenance work on the camera. Another time, a nestling was gazing out the entrance when Filbert arrived. It quickly ducked back inside as if it hadn't been up to anything. No one fledged that day, and tomorrow they'd be 20 days old. I have a good feeling it's going to be the big day. We set up both the GoPro inside and the DJI camera outside. It wasn't long before the nestlings were ready to go. The first one flew far off to the side. Filbert arrived, gave his encouraging Phoebe calls, and fed the remaining chicks before leaving. After that, another fledged. And 
then another. The last chick reached the hole, but nature called first. After pooping on the wall, it lost its footing and tumbled back into the box. A little shaken at first, it quickly recovered, climbed back up, and off it went. Free as, well, a bird. Four new fledglings ready for their next adventure. Filbert returned soon after to check on things, and Ever the Good Housekeeper removed that last chick's fecal sack before leaving. With the season over for this pair, we got busy cleaning of the nest box. Jamie had built it in the previous fall, and it clearly had Inky's stamp of approval. Eight chicks successfully raised to fledging this year. She didn't leave many wood chips in the bottom, and the nest wasn't built especially high. I was eager to see if the two eggs from the first brood were buried in the nest material. No eggs, no shells. Did she use them for the second brood, or consume them during the first when the camera wasn't running? It's a mystery only Inky knows. Look at this. Taking apart the nest was fascinating. <laughs> the layers of moss, fur, and plant fibers were so beautifully arranged. It's fur. She did an incredible job. <laughs> People often ask when to clean out a nest box. And the answer is at the end of the nesting season, soon after the chicks fledge. Just make sure no one else has begun nesting before going ahead, and then store it away until next spring. So what about the fledglings? When I saw them again, they were all healthy and full of life and it felt like the perfect close to Inky and Filbert's season. Another job well done. With her chicks grown, Inky can finally turn her attention to herself, renewing her strength as fresh feathers come in. But the forest always holds more stories. The other chickadee pair I mentioned earlier, Ada and Sol, raising their family in that roofless snag, showed me something very different and deeply endearing. I'm working toward getting that video out soon, hopefully next Sunday, so hit that bell to be notified. Thank you for watching. Happy birding!